You are now listening to Changing Lives, a podcast presented by Mount Gilead Full Gospel International Ministries, hosted by co pastor Elena Robertson. Hello, and welcome to Changing Lives. We are changing lives with the Word of God. I'm so glad you tuned in to this podcast, and I'm excited to share God's Word with you. Uh, Every time I get into His Word, I just become more appreciative of um, the power that's in His Word, um, just what it does uh, as far as guiding my life and empowering my life and uh, giving me everything that I need when I need it. And so I just pray that as I share this podcast with you, um, that you receive the power that you need, the enlightenment, the peace, just whatever that you stand in need of that can only come from God. I just pray that you'll be able to receive that. Um, as I've been meditating here lately, just um, actually we've, we've been meditating on the fruit of the Spirit, but that's not what the message is going to be about. But in meditating on the fruit of the Spirit, um, we uh, just really began to focus in on how our lives are a lives that we live the opposite of what the world Live so. So, what I want to share with you is just uh, just some more um, this insight and just more of biblically based um, principles based on living a life of the opposite world, and um, and I know that this is going to be a blessing to you. And so, I was moved by a quote, and I'm going to quote it again. You probably heard it a couple of times if you've been keeping up with the podcast uh, by Andy Minio, and he talked about here is the paradox of a Christian of Christian living: we must give up self control to gain control. And as I thought about that, I was like, yes, our lives is a life where um, <clears throat> we're. Um, instructed by the Word of God to do things that's contrary to what seems like we should be doing, but yet it gets the results. You know, and I think about the Word of God where it talks about um, that God's thoughts are not our thoughts and His ways are not our ways. Um, And, but yet He reveals them to us through His Word. And why does He reveal His thoughts, His ways in the Word of God to us? Because He wants us to think like he thinks. He wants our ways to be like his ways. And so, um, so, and, and so, and, and, and further meditating and see all throughout the word of God, that's, that's just how he set it up that we, we, we live our lives. We think a certain way that's going to be very contrary to how the world lives their lives. And so when I think of that word paradox, um, it, it's, 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 it's seemingly a contradictory to what's being said. Like, I mean, how, you know, if you're living a Christian life, how can you, you know, um, love somebody that, that, you know, that hates you or does wrong to you, but yet the word of God tells us to love them, you know? And so, so your automatic reaction as far as in the flesh or in the world point of view, a way of doing is, is to, you know, tit for tat, evil for evil. You do me wrong. I'm going to do you wrong. Or you shut them down. But to come with a force such as love, it's, it's hard for the natural mind or, um, you know, being to, to comprehend, to do something um, so contrary, but yet get just amazing results, you know? And I can just think back of many times when I had an opportunity to, to, um, to repay somebody for the evil that they had done towards me, but yet I decided to love instead of, you know, instead of coming back with, with a rebuttal or, um, you know, a, a, a mean or nasty remark, I held my tongue. That's, that's a paradox, a living a life of, of contrary um, to get the results um, that God wants us to get is contrary to the world. And so when you look at paradox, it, it, it seems like it's opposed to common sense, you know, um, that knee jerk reaction when something happens to you, what's that natural reaction? And oftentimes it's the reaction that's opposite of what God wants us to react to. So it doesn't make sense to us. Okay. And so, um, but yet when you really look at the different, um, paradoxes, 
you know, it, 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 it's actually something that is very powerful. It's productive. It's, 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 it, it produces good results. <laughs> and don't we want good results produced in our lives? I don't know about you, but I know I do. You know, I don't want to live this life and the results that I'm getting, you know, through my own reactions or, you know, uh, you know, my remedies or whatever it may be is not producing something that brings me peace, brings me joy, brings me happiness, brings unity uh, to my brothers and sisters and others who are uh, in this world, you know? And so, you know, and I'm also reminded of the scripture where it talks about we're in this world, but we're not of this world. And what does that mean? It means we, we're we not called to act like, you know, the world does. We are called to act like our father. And, you know, um, I heard this particular um, story about this Buddhist that was uh, studying the life of Christians. And and he, in his observance of the life of Christians, he he observed that, you know, of course, he had to study about Christ. And, um, and, and he noted, yeah, yes, it's a good life. It's a great life. It's a powerful life. But the, one of the comments he gave to um, his, his constituent was that, um, but, but you guys don't act like you're Christ. And, and what, a, what a terrible testimony to have on our behalf that we're, we're, we're Christians and our lives should be like Christ um, and emanate all that his life uh, is about and all that he does and all um, that comes from out of him, um, that in a general sense of observation, we don't look like him. My goodness. And then it made me think about, you know, uh, if I were to ask you, is there somebody in your life that, that you could look at as a Christian, a Christian, look at somebody that's a Christian, somebody that's, that, 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 emanates the love of Christ, could you think of somebody? You know, and I actually have quite a few people that I can think of, and I'm thankful for that, um, that that they can actually be like mirrors of Christ um, to me, that when I look at them, I see the love of God. When I look at them, I see um, just uh, perseverance and commitment and dedication and serving and living for God, um, and that um, when I look at them, I can go to the word and see their different characteristics and, um, you know, nature and ways that resemble the word of God and that resemble Christ and resemble our father. And really, that's how all of our lives ought to be as a Christian, you know. And so then the next question was, you know, can people look into my life? I'm talking to myself as an individual and see my life as a mirror of a Christian life and how we should live with the love of God. And, um, you know, and, and I actually, you know, believe that, you know, I would like to think or, or pray that, you know, that it's a mirror, but I know that I have flaws and I know I have ways that I need to work on, right? And I believe we all do, but it's not on me to necessarily pinpoint your ways, uh, your errors. It's really my um, or should be my goal to to really focus in in the ways that I need to work on to make them resemble more of a Christian life, to make them look more like Christ, right? Because we should be his mirror image in the earth today, right? And um and and how many know that our lives speak louder than words. You know, when somebody's talking a good game, it's like, yeah, yeah, good. But then the next thing I'm looking for are where are the results? Do I see that you are living what you're talking about? Because we can talk a good game. We can talk really good, you know, and we can quote scriptures and we can, we, you know, we can have that form of, but we deny that power when we don't allow it to, 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 to take root in our lives and become a part of our lives to the point where it's undeniable that this is the this is the life of a Christian, and to make it also not only undeniable but desirable. You know, I desire to live like this person who lives like Christ because they're showing me they can live that life in a world 
where there's so much opposition, you know, and so and that that's really what it's all about. And that's what I strive for every day to 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 live a life, to be a clear mirror of Jesus Christ. And so how many know that that takes that takes a process and it takes a continual process at working at it? You know, I think about even this Christian life, you know, it's not an easy life. It's a blessed life, no doubt. And there are many blessings, but the word of God tells us that, you know, in this world, you we're going to have tribulation. We're going to have people that treat us wrong. We're going to have people that that misunderstand us. We're going to have people that despitefully, that, that intentionally do us wrong just because they hate us because we bear the name of Christ, because we, we're the ones that st- are standing up for, you know, our lives being lived to glorify God. And there are people who who despise that. And so they will do things and say things to plot and plan against us, which is they're only doing with what their father, Satan, the enemy, the devil, you know, has put them up to do, you know. And so, but this life is a life that as we commit ourselves to God um, and to live this Christian life, we're also signing up for persecution. Yeah, we're signing up for life eternal. We're signing up for so many blessings all throughout the word. The word it talks about in Psalms where he loads us up daily with benefits. I mean, the, I love living this life. It's a good life because we serve a good, good father who blesses us day after day. But in those blessings, we have to work through the process of living this life that comes with persecution, tribulation, trials, hard times, and working out our soul salvation, okay? And um, and so, so in that, you know, we have to look at what, you know, I say this is what we signed up for. You got to really recognize what you signed up for. You know, when you say, I confess the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, for God I live and for God I die. And sometimes we say those words and it sounds good, but what we're really saying is, I'm willing to go the distance of what it takes to be a Christian, which means all the persecution that comes along with all the blessings, all the commitment, um, the dedication that it takes, um, the discipline that it takes, the maturity, the constant maturity that it takes uh, in the word. You know, I've been in, in this Christian faith for well over I don't know, but been about over 40 years now, almost 50 years. However, um, I can never get to the place where I have arrived and say that I am fully mature because <laughs> I have to still work through this flesh to contend with this flesh to get it to conform to the word of God, to get it to conform to the ways of God. And so we know this scripture, a lot of us are so familiar with Romans 12, 1, where it talks about 12, 1 and 2, where it talks about not being conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What are we renewing our minds with? It's got to be the word of God. And that's a daily process that we have to go through every single day, renewing our minds so that that we're not conforming to hate like the world hates, that we're not conforming to acting like the world acts, that we're not conforming to to doing all the things that the world uh, says it's okay to do because we're only human. You know, that's an excuse that's used a whole lot. We're only human. But I thank God for his word that, you know, it shows me not only in his word, but but through living epistles that God has placed in our lives that I've dared to, su- to humble myself, submit myself under, and to receive. No, they're not perfect beings, but they're being perfected, perfected in allowing the word of God to be a daily part of their process of, 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 of being conformed to the word of God the ways of God, the thoughts of God. And so when you look at that paradox, you know, I I, I think it's, um, you know, cl- close related to, you know, when you think of an anomaly, um, A-N-O-M-A-L-Y, anomaly, something that's not normal. Now, you know, there's a difference between something that is an anomaly 
and something that's abnormal. Because when something is abnormal, you're saying that that thing is bad. Something's wrong with it. It's totally wrong. And um, it doesn't produce good results. When you're talking about a, an, an anomaly, anomaly, what you're saying is it, 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 it is not the norm, but it does produce good results. It's another word that you can say a mystery, you know, uh, mystery is not bad because that's how God, God has many mysteries that he has presented before us and he wants us to partake of it. And it is through his spirit that he reveals them to us. And so living the Christian life is a life of, um, it's, it's an anomaly. And, and when I look at the word anomaly, um, you know, it, it reminds me of a saying that I hear so much throughout the earth today. And that is the phrase, can we normalize? And then you tag on, you know, can we normalize what? Depression. Can we normalize, you know, um, a suicide? Can we normalize these things? And I would hear it. And for some reason, it never sat right with me because I would immediately go to, okay, so is it okay? And and that's what we're saying, that it's okay to embrace that everybody's going through it and let's accept this, that everybody's going through it, um, you know, and um, l- let's accept that, you know, uh, this is the way that it's going to be. You know, another phrase, this is our new normal. No, I, I could not. I could not accept that that's, you know, the, the, you know, the things that we went through with the pandemic and things shifting and changing. Yeah, there were certain things that would never be the same again, but I didn't receive that pattern of life that came out of that as my new normal. Come on now. I'm thinking about the word of God that's always, that talks about how we ought to be always be abounding in the work of the Lord, that, that, that we grow from faith to faith <laughs> and from glory to glory, right? It gets, it gets better and better and gooder and gooder. That's the life that we live in Christ Jesus. So when you tell me to normalize something that, that I see throughout the word of God, that God is not promoting, God doesn't promote suicide. He doesn't promote uh, mental illnesses. When you look throughout anything that to him was abnormal, he went after it. He went after it to heal, to deliver, to set free. He spoke the word. He trained his disciples to not be okay with things that were not aligned with his word. And so when you tell me to normalize um, depression, what you're telling me is make it okay for people to be depressed. Then once you do that, then we can go through the process of trying to help them. Uh, no, that's, that's not what the word uh, uh, trains us to do, you know? Um, and um, I'm thinking about the scripture where it talks about for this purpose was the son of God manifested to destroy the works of the evil one. And so my thinking is this, that if Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the evil one, and we have been the char- given the charge that we shall do greater works than Jesus, that, that's a heavy weight right there. But that means it's that, that we can do greater works than Jesus did. So what did Jesus do? He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He set the captives free. He ministered to those who were outcast and downtrodden. He did all of these things, but he never went to the place where he was like, okay, I'm going to accept that, that all of y'all have this, right? And, and that we're going to work along with that. No, he, ne- he never worked along with it. No, what he did was he went after it. When people were sick, he didn't put up with the sickness. He, he, he came to heal, to set free and deliver. And so there's a part of us that, yeah, we have to recognize there's going to be people who are sick in the earth. There's going to be people who are suicidal, that's very real. Yeah. But when I'm not going to allow the, 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 the mindset of the world to say it's OK that we're living in a world that people are suicidal. No, it's not OK. 
You know what? Because I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. And what I am to do in this world is to bring the kingdom of heaven down in this earth realm to transform and 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 to and to redeem and to set free people. So because because if you try to normalize things, then that means that you can run the risk of letting it be okay, and then you can become callous of all the different cases that are going on. And then you can even become so overwhelmed that you're not even driven to do all that you can do to set the captives free. Because that's what it is. When people are depressed, they are captive by the mindset of the enemy. They are captive by the thoughts of of the enemy. Come on now, I'm coming after the devil in this thing. We are captive by the ways of the world that says this is how you do it and and they're not really uh 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 thinking about the consequences that come about of the ways that are contrary to the ways of God. And so so I would say watch the ideology of normalizing things that God never normalized in his word, okay? Watch how we take on the tactics or techniques or um, the steps or procedures or philosophies of the world to try to gain an angle to be able to, to reach people. You know, some things are, they're not bad. You know, when, when you deal with, you know, trying to work with people dealing with suicide and things like that, you know, um, you know, you, you have to reach them in some way, but don't allow what God presents in his word to take a back burner. OK, that ought to be on the forefront of my mind. So so when I, when I hear the phrase normalize this, normalize that, why not normalize the mind of Christ? Come on, let's deal with that, right? Why not normalize how we ought to think according to the word of God, right? Because if we can do more normalizing the word of God, more normalizing how we ought to think, and I'm telling you, people dealing with low self-esteem would not be dealing with that. People dealing with depression, if we normalize the mind of Christ and, and that is our drive, that is our aim to help people and that we not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ and that we don't put techniques and, 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 and steps before the word of God, right? Um, then I believe that more people will be set free in their minds and then other areas of our lives. When you don't have peace, What have we done? We have normalized that it's okay to be anxious. It's it's, it's okay to worry when things don't line up, when things aren't going our way, when things don't seem like they're going to, to work out towards our good. It's okay to wake up in the morning and worry about how our ends going to be met. As opposed to, if we were to normalize the mind of Christ, then we're training ourselves and we're training others that when you wake up, This is how you ought to think. Let's normalize the process of thinking. Come on, can we go to Philippians where it talks about, finally, my brother, think on these things. Whatsoever things are pure, are lovely, just, of of a good report, uh, of virtue, uh, if there be any praise. Come on now. These are, this is what we ought to normalize, right? Okay. And so, and so, so for that, it's obvious that if you're in this world long enough, you recognize that the, the thoughts of the world, the thoughts and the ways of the world are totally opposite to the thoughts and the ways of living the Christian life, how Christ Jesus thought, how our father, because the because Jesus came from out of the heavenly father, right? And the Holy Spirit came from the father. Although they're God in three persons, God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Ghost, they came from God Almighty, right? And so he strategically released the seed of Jesus Christ in this earth realm. Why? Because he wanted us to think like he thought. So he had to send somebody in the earth realm to begin to contend with the the ways of the world, how the world thinks. And Jesus was our ultimate example of how you can live in this world but you don't have to be like the world. You don't have to conform to the world. So that lets me know it can be done. 
all throughout the word, it shows we can think like Christ. We can have the mind of Christ. But let me tell you something. It is a, uh, um, it is a daily uh, discipline um, that, you know, you can think, you know, thoughts that are lined up with the word of God. You can think those pure thoughts, trustworthy thoughts, true thoughts, honest thoughts, pure thoughts, good thoughts, you know, praiseworthy thoughts. You can thank them like this morning. But if you forfeit them as you go throughout the day and you begin to deal with persecution, you begin to deal with testing and trials, right? Which which God takes them. And if we keep the right perspective alignment with God's word, then we can weather those and we can go through them and, and become even stronger and greater and more disciplined and more perfected in the mind of Christ. But if we cave in, if we give up, if we lose heart, if we begin to uh, um, take on the, the, the thoughts of the, of the enemy that he suggests to us, because that's what it is. It starts out as a suggestion. You can't do this. You're not capable of doing this. There's something wrong with you. You know, they hate you. And, you know, and we know how that process, it starts with a suggestion from the enemy. But when we are uh, relentless and we are vigilant about what is presented to us, Okay, and we um, uh, are, are, are stewards of if this is presented to me, whatever, whether it's a thought or way, suggestion, whatever it can be, and it comes to us and we're vigilant and we're um, we're disciplined in recognizing, okay, does this line up with the thoughts and the ways of God? Then you then you run uh, the the possibility or the chance of being victorious in whatever trial or test comes your way because you have given it an opportunity to be uh, sifted by the word of God, right? To be proven, to be tried by the word of God to say, okay, wait a minute. I, I feel like this is being spoken of my life and it's negative and it doesn't line up with the word of God. Do I accept it or do I repel it? because I take on what the word of God says with me. And when you repel it, you pass the test. And what happens when you pass the test? You graduate to the next level and you become more perfected, right? Oh my goodness. This is living the life of, of having a, a, a paradoxical life, okay, in Christ Jesus. And so when you look all throughout the word of God, you know, we are challenged. The ways of God is that, there, we, we, there is an invisible realm, <laughs> which is in the spirit. And there is a conquering realm that we have. And there, and, and there are things that we do to, to gain victory, to gain that. And, you know, you think about, you know, you see um, the unseen things. And when you see the unthings, you see, you know, just like Elijah was talking, uh, praying for his servant and asking God to open his eyes that he can see. And who they were in the midst of the battle where the enemy was coming up against him and, and his, 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 his servant was seeing in the natural and he saw the army coming up against him. But, 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 but Elijah prayed for his servant to say, God, open his eyes that he can see that those who are forced are greater than those who are against us. And when his eyes were open, he began to see the unseen realm. Okay. And that's what that paradox is, is that we have to see the unseen realm so that we can gain the victory to see what God has in store for us. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, the unseen realm, if we keep, if we look to the things that God has prepared and planned for us, then we're able to see that God has some good things prepared for us. He has an expected end. He has a victorious in. But when we look in the natural and we see, oh, this is against us. Oh, this is not lined up. Oh, this is not here. Or this needs to be there and it's not. Or this hasn't gotten there yet. Then we become discouraged. We become disillusioned illusion because we are, are, are going with the sight, the natural sight that the world has indoctrinated us with. Now, of course, we live in the world. We know we got to do natural things. But I'm talking about when we walk, literally walk this Christian life out, we have to begin to see past 
the natural and look into the supernatural. And so, you know, Paul, he he talked about it all the time where he talked about the different things that he was able to do. And he talked about how living the life of Jesus Christ, serving God, he said, uh, you know, um, you know, to, to live for Christ, he talked about that he'd rather lose his life. He said all the things that he's gained in this earthly realm, he counted it all dung <laughs> so that he can uh, uh, gain some things in the supernatural. And so, you know, so I just want to encourage you, you know, that you meditate more on uh, this life that we as Christians should be indoctrinated with. Because it's the word of God. If we're going to really live the Christian life, are, are we going to really do this thing? Because if we really are, then we got to realize that we're going to be in this world, but not of it. That we're going to be like strangers in this world because the things that we're going to do in this world, if we're living it according to God's word, it's going to be strange to the world. It's not going to line up. We, we're going to be, st- we're going to stand out. OK, but I'd rather stand out <laughs> in the world and have God for me and on my side than to stand in the world and, and to, to blend in with the crowd. And I not live a victorious life because I choose to go with the crowd and to be a people pleaser and, and, and to to, you know, to to go the ways of the world, to be conformed to how they handle turmoil and and how they handle persecution to to be conformed to how they handle the enemy when the enemy when somebody comes up against you and 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 does things wrongly wrongly uh, towards you I refuse to allow the enemy to get me to play dirty like he does right I'd rather use the things that are in the supernatural to get the victory that God gives me with ease really you know and gain that victorious life and have the peace that God intends for me to have in this world. So I, I, I encourage you, I provoke you to go and study, go to the Beatitudes, look at all the things that he poured out. Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's not talking about being poor, not, not having money. It's talking about having a poor, a, 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 a spirit that's got humility, that's humble, that's meek, that, 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 that's not trying to be all puffed up. You know, that's not trying to make your way. You know, that's not trying to be famous so that you can get this or get that. No, he talked about those who mourn, those, those who, 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 you know, who, who may be going through different things and, you know, um, you're going to be comforted. Why? If you, if, if you allow, uh, your mourning to be in Christ Jesus. He'll give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. Come on, and when you do it God's way, but when you do it the world's way, there is no hope in that. When you do it the world's way, then you then then you 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 begin to internalize things and allow yourself to be self destructive, because the way God has set this thing up, He He. He, he wants us to allow ourselves to, to live from the inside out and not from the outside in. Come on now. And it just goes on. It talks about they, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. He said they shall be filled. When you hunger and thirst for the things of God, you're going to be filled. I mean, just all throughout the Bible, I think one familiar one where, where, where Paul talked about in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, says, my grace is sufficient. This is Jesus talking to Paul. And he said, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. How, how, can, how can I be strong when I'm weak? It's when I allow God's grace to empower me to do the things that I can't do in and of myself. When I do it God's way, when I don't try to do it within my own strength, because my own strength falls short. My own strength is it's got limitations. There's potholes, there's, there's, there's weaknesses that I cannot make up in my flesh to gain what I need to gain. Not any lasting thing, not anything that's going to sustain me, right? But when I get lost in him, when I recognize my weakness and that I can't do this, but when I recognize that I can do all things through Christ, then what do I do? I make an exchange of my weakness for his greatness, for his strength. It's a powerful thing. And so let us meditate and and get that in our spirit to to train ourselves to live a life according to God's thoughts and according to God's way. Let's not just be caught up in going to church and 
and getting, you know, these scriptures and hearing these messages and not allowing these uh, paradoxical types of way of living uh, to, to become a part of our total being, right? Um, that's what God is calling us to do. And, and that's a part of uh, uh, maturing in him. That's a part of uh, presenting ourselves in such a way that we become the mirror image of Christ, you know? And so we can have the mind of Christ. We can do all things through Christ, right? We can be strong in him. Um, we can, we can you know, seem like that we're in the back of the line, but when we're doing it in him, according to his righteousness, God will take us all the way up to the front. And we don't even know how he did it. But when we do it in him, we don't have to make a way for ourselves. He makes a way for us. Right. And so I just provoke you and urge you to to don't normalize anything that's not lined up with the thoughts and the ways of God. But let's normalize the thoughts and the ways of God. God bless you. This has been another episode of Changing Lives. Be sure to subscribe to stay updated on new episodes. Also, find us on the web at mountgileadfgim.org and follow us on Instagram at mountgileadfgim.org.